Yo guys, today I'm going to take a look at how to learn to drive without the racing line in F122. This is a slightly different assist to many of the others, as it's not focused on how to make your car easier to drive. Instead, it puts more emphasis on the tracks you're driving around. While it can be extremely useful if you're driving on a completely new track, the bright green and red line does break immersion. If your goal is to learn how to drive F122 without any assists enabled and have the most realistic experience possible, you're going to have to learn to drive without the racing line. In this video, I'm going to run through some of the best techniques and tips to help you remove the racing line as quickly as possible. In F122, the racing line is designed to help you learn where to position your car on each track, as well as helping you know when to brake and accelerate. It appears on the track as a bright green, orange and red line. The green segments tell you when to accelerate, the red segments tell you when to brake, and if it's orange, you're in a transition zone between braking, accelerating and coasting. This can be one of the most useful assists in F122. While I don't use it personally, I have done in the past, especially when visiting new tracks such as Jeddah or Miami for the first time. By all means, when you first jump into F122, enabling the racing line will speed up your learning process. It'll help you quickly see where you should have your car positioned, and it'll help you learn the braking zones for each corner. But once you have a good understanding of a track, I would always recommend disabling the racing line completely as soon as you can. While the racing line is helpful for teaching you the rough racing line and braking points, it doesn't show you the optimal racing line. Around some corners, you can be faster if you don't necessarily follow the exact racing line provided using this assist. For example, the line can change to red too early for some corners, which will get you into the habit of braking too early. However, in some cases, you can brake slightly later or trail brake into a corner, which would make you faster. So I'd recommend disabling it as soon as you can. One of the best ways to make yourself feel comfortable racing without the racing line enabled is to learn the basics of where you should be positioning your car around most tracks. At most tracks, the same principles apply to where you should position your car. There are, of course, some irregular corners which require a different approach. However, 90% of corners will follow these rules. You should almost always position your car on the outside of the track when approaching a corner. Look for the brake markers at the side of the track for your reference points to know when to start braking and always try to brake in a straight line. Then you should lift off the brake as you start to turn into a corner and aim to hit the inside curb of the corner before you start to accelerate again. And then when you're accelerating, drift back out to the outside of the track to minimize the overall corner angle. Following this approach to most corners in F122, will generally have you racing on the correct racing line. If you haven't fully learned the exact braking points for each corner, just remembering these positioning tips will at least ensure you're on the correct part of the track on the approach to the next corner. As you start to practice the track further and you put in more and more laps, you'll start to learn each corner in more detail. By ensuring you're on the right part of the track, you can then spend time focusing on learning your braking points, along with how much speed you can carry through a turn. Finding the optimal braking point for each corner isn't always the easiest thing to do. The distance that it takes for you to slow your car down depends on a few factors. How fast you're going, the grip level of your tyres, and the track, and the elevation of the track. For example, braking from 150 miles an hour into a corner while travelling up a hill will allow you to start braking later. You can use the incline to help slow your car. On the other hand, Braking downhill with worn tyres will result in a much longer braking zone. But one of the key methods of finding the best braking point is to use brake markers and other reference points around the track. On the approach to most corners in F122, you'll see brake marker boards. These show you the distance to the corner. As you spend more time in F122, you'll quickly learn how fast your car slows down from each distance. You'll find that braking at the 100 meter board can slow your car from 150 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour in time for the corner apex for example. Once you roughly know this, you can apply this mentality to new tracks as you start to learn them. If you're learning to use brake marker boards for the first time, I'd recommend braking pretty early into the corner on the approach and just seeing how fast you slow down. Remember the distance from the corner that you were when you applied the brakes. If you slow down too quickly, next lap you can brake slightly later while still paying attention to the brake marker boards. Keep repeating this until you find the point where you can just slow your car down in time to make the corner. This should roughly be your ideal braking point. 
Now simply remember the reference point at which you started applying the brakes. This could be a brake marker board or something else around the track such as a bridge or a specific item on the side of the track. Remembering these reference points for each corner will allow you to brake more precisely at the same point each lap. And while you're approaching a corner, you'll want to have as much time as possible to decide where to place your car and when to brake. Focus your vision as far in front as you can see will help you do this. By focusing on the far distance, you'll see corners coming at you much sooner, giving you more time to react. And remember, an F1 car is incredibly fast, meaning you'll reach things in the distance extremely quickly. So giving yourself as much time as possible to make decisions around each lap is very beneficial. Once you're into the braking zone of a corner, you should now try to keep your car straight and positioned on the outside of the track. When the point comes to start lifting off the brake pedal and turning into the corner, you should then switch your attention to one thing, the apex. This is the innermost part of the corner and it's the part of the inside of the track that you'll get closest to as you round the corner before you start accelerating. There's usually a curb on the inside of the apex which you should look to get close to. Some corners have low curbs on the inside. These can be attacked and driven over to shorten the corner and reduce the corner angle, while other tracks have larger curbs or large bumps on the apex. With those corners, you should look to get as close as you can without hitting the bump. Riding over a large curb can unsettle your car, forcing you to spend time correcting your car's behavior rather than accelerating. A key example of this is the final chicane in Spain. These corners feature very large sausage curbs that you ideally don't want to touch. These are there to stop drivers from cutting the corner too much and they punish any driver that hits them. Once you've reached the apex, the next part of the corner is the exit onto the next straight. This is one of the most crucial parts of any corner as it can dictate how fast you are down the following straight. This can affect whether you can potentially overtake the car in front or successfully defend the car behind. To maximize your speed when exiting a corner, you should start to drift back across the track. This will allow you to straighten your car sooner, allowing you to get back on the throttle earlier. By drifting over to the opposite side of the track, you're also reducing the corner angle, which can increase the amount of speed you're able to take through the middle part of the corner. For more tips on how to get a perfect corner exit, watch our video on how to drive without traction control. In there I discuss a few tips and tricks on how to gradually apply the throttle when you're exiting a corner to get the best acceleration. Hopefully these tips for driving without the racing line will allow you to quickly disable it as soon as you can. Driving without a racing line is all about confidence and memory. You'll need to position your car confidently following the tips I mentioned in this video and you should start remembering reference points when you're approaching corners. If you're still struggling to drive without the racing line, here are some top tips on how to remove it in F122. Look to start the first practice session of any weekend with the racing line enabled. Complete enough laps for you to loosely learn the track layout and where you should be positioning the car roughly. Then disable the racing line and run a few more laps. Try to remember where the racing line told you to position the car and when to start braking. And then keep your eyes focused on braking reference points such as brake markers. Another top tip is to try to follow other cars during the practice session to see how and where they position their car and how fast they are. If you guys have enjoyed this video and it's helped you out even in the slightest, drop this video a like as it will really help with the YouTube algorithm. Also leave a comment below and let me know how you're getting on in F122. Ask me any questions and I'll try to respond as quickly as I can as well. And if you enjoy this video and this style of content, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell because I'll be releasing a lot more F122 videos in the coming days. But for now guys, I'll see you on track.